Hey everyone, it's been a little while. So I realized that I've made this battery spot welder and I never give an update to how this thing actually works. So let me explain the setup we have real quick. We're gonna use a 12 volt battery to power everything. And the actually the lithium ion battery in question that we are replacing is this cheapo one in my little work light right here. It dies pretty frequently and I wanna extend the capacity. So we're gonna upgrade this from, what brand is this again? It's a roofer, some Chinese brand or low quality lithium ion manufacturer, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's Chinese made, something like that. And then we're gonna upgrade it to a Sony lithium ion cell, 18650 cells for, for these. Uh, larger capacity, better quality, so it should be better overall. I um, actually already rebuilt a lithium ion battery pack, uh, one of my older Makita tools, and I uh, never shot a video for how that works. That was a couple years ago, so I figured I would uh, Hook the camera up and show how this works. So anyway, 12 volt battery power everything. This multimeter, I'll explain what that's here in a second. Then we have the unit I built using a, ironically, I think I got this off of AliExpress, just a little delay timer. And then I built an enclosure, 3D printed. And then we have some, basically some electrodes here, which is going to be the connection points you're gonna make on the nickel strips to bond them to the battery safely. Remember, don't ever solder directly to lithium ions, and you probably already know that if you're watching this. So, anyway, uh, this is powered by a 12 volt source. We're just gonna go ahead and flip this on. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can see. This is showing you that this is gonna be on for approximately 50 milliseconds. Very, very brief on time. Because what you don't want to have happen is burn up. It's very, very easy to burn up the the nickel strips on there. So we want to control how long the circuit's going to be complete for. Because it's going to be a huge inrush current. And this is limiting the on time of the circuit to 50 milliseconds. This bottom thing right here. Yeah, well, I know what it looks like it says. But this is for the controlling like what type of setting on there. So if I zoom out, I'll kind of show you how everything works on this. So what I've done is I've hooked up the multimeter leads to, it's kind of hard to, well actually you won't be able to see it, but I have one multimeter lead hooked up to one end of the electrode and then the other end of the electrode. And on the meter you can see it's an open circuit, that's what OL means, basically out of range, overload, out of limit. It's it's all the same thing, basically it's, it's an open circuit right now. That's because the contactor isn't energized. And then this pedal right here is what's going to energize it and then the timer is going to basically complete the circuit Context is on the contactor in there is only going to close for 50 milliseconds or 0 0.05 seconds So this is going to be activated by my foot down there. I'll go and turn on the light when I'm actually doing the Welding process on there, but for now, I'm just gonna tap it with my hand You can see very very briefly How the meter is picking up and it's a very very high resistance, but the reason being is the circuit's on for such a brief period of time that it won't really have its, uh, you won't really see the true resistance value. It's basically close to zero on that one. Very, very low resistance, but the contactor is basically coming together like this very briefly and then just releasing. But either way, you can see how that's gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything set up and I'll bring it back in to show you the process of the actual welding. What I have right here is the battery management little PCB the controller right here. And don't worry, this is only like very lightly finger clamped in place. Like there's not a lot of pressure on here. And what I have here is my strip of nickel bent and pre-cut. I've got rid of all the sharp edges. So what I'm gonna do is get this set up. And first thing I'm gonna do, I'm not sure how well this is gonna come up, but I'm going to spot weld this to the actual connection point here on the PCB. And this is how it was done from the factory, so I'm just gonna emulate it. A lot of times, I don't wanna say a lot of times, but uh, yeah, most of the times these strips are gonna be spot welded because whenever there's a lot of current flowing through here, whenever the battery's discharging, uh, they don't want the solder to basically melt on here. So I'm gonna get everything set up. I have the electrodes firmly placed, they're not touching, and I'm gonna give a quick zap with the pedal, and we'll see what happens. You can see it's a, it's a bit ugly, but what's important is that it made good contact on here. And that's where it all comes down to. Your, your mileage may vary in terms of getting the delay timer unit set up. For 50 milliseconds, that seemed to work pretty well with the actual last time I did a the battery 
swap out on my old battery pack. That seemed to work pretty well, but you're gonna have to kind of dial it in. Experiment on the old lithium ion cell before you actually go to do the real thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side set up and then we'll go from there. Okay, so same thing as before. Electrodes firmly pressed. One, two, three. There we go. There you go. So you can see this is a nice spot weld on here. No chunks blew off. Like the other one, I got a little bit too close to the edge on here. But eh, this one right here, my finger's touching. It's not the prettiest, but it still works. They're not always going to be perfect, especially if you haven't done this in a couple years. But once you get a hang, once you get the hang of it, then you'll get a lot more consistent spot welds. And again, it's all about dialing in the the delay aspect of it. You don't want too much current running in there, otherwise it's just going to blow the the metal strips off of there. Also, another thing, it's perfectly okay to grab onto the electrodes because this is only a 12 volt source. Even though it's a lot of current that's flowing for a brief amount of time, it's not going to hurt you. If you're worried about that, you can use some sort of insulative gloves. But honestly, it will be fine with the type of voltages we're dealing with. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the actual cell itself, and we will go from there. So a couple things worth mentioning. I've done a couple wraps of Captain tape on the top and the bottom here, where these actual nickel strips fold over and connect to our battery management little PCB right here. And that's just to ensure there's not any sort of abrasive and action happening or a chance for the these strips to poke through that insulative layer on the 18650 cell. And essentially, I just want to make sure there's no short circuits. This all will be covered anyway after the fact, but that's just a little extra insurance. You don't have to do that. You can do it with electrical tape if you really want to. But a couple things worth pointing out too. This is where you need to look at the battery manufacturer and look at the specifications they call for when you're spot welding on here. And a lot of them should be similar, but they uh, specifically, a couple of things you have to be careful about on this positive terminal connection that I'm going to weld on. If you have too much current, it's very easy to actually rupture the burst disc on here and have this vent and then basically the battery's trash. And then on the back side of this for the negative terminal connection, you don't want to spot weld directly in the middle. So again, that's why it's critical to practice dialing in everything first. And then when you're happy with it, we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. All right, here we go. Pretty happy with that. So all I'm doing is I'm shifting the connection points 90 degrees. Go right here, three, two, one. Oop, just kidding. Three, two, one, and. If you heard on there, I actually got a little, it, it actuated it twice, that was my bad. I got a little loose on the pedal. So, but yeah, either way we got a good connection on here. Now we're going to do the same for the back side. So this is where you want to avoid spot welding directly in the middle. So I'm going to space these out a little bit. And this is per the manufacturer of the battery. In this case, it's Sony. Oh, and by the way, the further apart you space them, that's going to affect your setting on here for the delay. But either way, here we go. I realize my hand was probably covering that, so I'll try to fix that a bit better for the next one. Hopefully y'all can see that, and there we go. I'm just doing a little wiggle test on both of them. Yeah, not bad. I'm happy with that. A little ugly, not perfect, but it's like everything in life. There's the positive connection. You can see I have a total of four spot welds. Uh, two of the actual welding process because electrodes go there and there. And then there's the backside. So yeah, overall pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. And of course, at the end of the day, let me do a voltage check on the ends of these terminals and we'll see how we did. So I'm just gonna check on our actual contact points and hey, 3.4 volts. You should do this whenever the battery is discharged. Although I say should, but it's one of those things where sometimes I know of people that have had to individually charge up some cells to match the battery pack that it's going in. So it's just at the end of the day, just make sure your settings are correct on the actual delay timer and you shouldn't have to worry about anything, but it is safer to weld these whenever it is discharged slightly on here. And this has been sitting for a couple of years and it still has that voltage. And granted, I know these do degrade over time just by sitting on its own, but yeah, that's pretty much it.
So, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll show, I'll do one quick little clip whenever everything's installed and back together and all, all pretty. But basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go cover this with Captain tape, little protective covers on both ends, just to make sure there's no possibility of this getting shorted out on here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, as you can see, everything's buttoned up nicely. I've got the heat shrink tubing over there. I didn't have a piece long enough, so I just kind of doubled it up, did uh, two halves. You can see the overlapping seam right here. Got little cushions on both sides just to make sure nothing pierces the uh, contact point on here and gets to the actual positive or negative terminal. There's captain tape underneath there. There's an extra protective strip that's going across the bus bars and the little uh, PCB on here. So everything's pretty damn well protected and uh, should be good to go once this thing's cooled down from the heat gun, from the heat shrink tubing. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this and then we'll do the final test to make sure the light works. Moment of truth. Watch your eyes. Yep, works pretty well now. Oh, and here's my old uh, battery pack on my Makita that I restored about a year ago. It's got double the capacity now, and uh, yeah, still holding up well. Not the prettiest thing, but she works. That's it.